So here is a clip I think is kind of funny. It is of an Oval Office meeting between President Trump and the Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. <laughs> So obviously the humor here comes from the idea that Trump's grasp of the English language is worse than the Japanese guys, but it's also an interesting little window into a fact that is sometimes easy to forget, which is that most world leaders can speak fluent English these days. In fact, I was curious about this, so I did a little informal survey. I looked at a ton of video footage of world leaders giving speeches at international gatherings, or doing interviews with the BBC, or having these sorts of little White House meetings and this sort of thing. And by my count, the vast majority of world leaders are both perfectly capable of, and perfectly comfortable with, speaking English about complicated political topics in a public setting. This growth of English fluency among world leaders, of course, mimics a larger growth of English as the preferred language of international communications in the 21st century. In previous centuries, by contrast, world leaders would often have to rely on human translators in order to communicate, but this system was always quite awkward and inefficient. So rather than rely on the logistical nightmare of trying to find people who could speak every random combination of two languages, it became easier to just get everyone to learn to speak a certain universal second language, which wound up being English. Sorry, Latin, you had a good run. French, A for effort. The fact that so many world leaders can speak English also reflects the fact that an awful lot of world leaders tend to get their education in America or Britain these days. In fact, according to the Higher Education Policy Institute, an incredible 55 countries have a leader who was educated in the US, while 53 countries have a leader who was educated in Great Britain. Even assuming there is a bit of overlap in these two groups for the Harvard and Oxford set, that's still close to a majority of all countries having a leader who received some sort of English immersive education in an English speaking country. So anyway, I just thought it might be a little bit interesting to do a survey of some of the better known world leaders and talk a little bit about their English skills, not judge them, of course, because a unilingual like me is hardly in any place to do that, but just analyze them knowing that English fluency is one of the most essential skills to have to be a world leader in the 21st century. Now, putting aside the leaders of English-speaking countries, who are the best English-speaking heads of state on Earth? Well, there is a small group of world leaders who speak English at what you could call native level fluency, which is to say they have an ability to speak English so comfortably and so casually, there is basically no difference between them and a native English speaker except for maybe a slight accent. But in most cases, the leaders who can speak English this well usually have some special excuse. For instance, one of the most extreme examples would be Chris Yanis Karnas, the current prime minister of Latvia. Check out how well he speaks. We, we in the east of Europe, in the Baltics, um, for us, uh, occupation ended uh, only 28 years ago. So we very much remember what it means not to live in freedom, not to have the freedom of movement, the freedom of capital, the freedom of enterprise. And here's his excuse. He's actually American. You see, Prime Minister Karnas was born in the United States and grew up in a Latvian American household, speaking both Latvian and English. He didn't actually move to Latvia until he was in his 30s after graduating from the University of Pennsylvania. A similar case would be good old Benjamin Netanyahu, the current Prime Minister of Israel. What I ended up doing was to trim the public sector, uh, help the private sector, and remove the barriers to competition, which I still have to do. I fight regulation with machetes. He emigrated to America from Israel with his family when he was a little kid, and as a result, grew up speaking both Hebrew and English. Like Prime Minister Karnas, he also went to college in the US, in his case, MIT and Harvard. When Netanyahu was in his 20s and 30s, he moved back and forth between Israel and America, mostly working in jobs that involved American-Israeli relations in some way. Then he got involved in Israeli politics, and he's lived in Israel full-time ever since. Regardless of what you think 
to boot Netanyahu. The fact that he is as good at English as he is has undoubtedly been a asset in his political career, given how much Israel relies on the US for support. It certainly made it easier for him to get in arguments on American news shows, at least. And not an answer to the question. Do you have them or do you not? Any country. There are a few other world leaders who received a fairly elite education in either the US or Great Britain and speak very good English as a result of that. This list would include the Prime Minister of Greece. And I think this sends a very positive signal that uh, the traditional center-right parties uh, in Europe, provided they have the right agenda, mm -hmm. can actually win elections. They can beat the populace. The Prime Minister of Singapore. I would not say that the North Koreans will do anything the Chinese want them to do. I mean, big countries know that small countries can be quite obstreperous. And the president of Croatia. We also share the Mediterranean coast, the coast of the Mediterranean, the responsibility for peace and security in the area. So that last bit of footage, by the way, was of her at a press conference with the Prime Minister of Israel. English was the only language that either leader spoke at that thing, which is something that is now quite common at bilateral summits of this sort. The leaders of some small European countries where the native language is quite obscure, tend to be quite good at English as well, including the prime ministers of Holland. At the end of the day, the choice for the president in the US is up to the American people. Sweden. Russia is contesting the basic rules and norms of international coexistence. And Norway. Developed countries are not meeting the target on, on health because we have too many people who are not getting treated for mental illnesses, for example. But this is also a little bit predictable given that Holland, Sweden, and Norway are also ranked as the first, second, and third best countries on earth when it comes to speaking English as a second language. If you've ever been to one of these countries, in fact, it is quite remarkable just how good your average person is at speaking English. When I was there, I found that asking someone, can you speak English? is a bit like asking, can you read? It's seen as incredibly condescending and insulting because of course the answer is yes. Okay, now let's talk about a couple of more famous world leaders ones who are a little bit more of a household name. Vladimir Putin, the head of Russia, is fluent in English, although he prefers not to speak it in public. Very nationalistic leaders sometimes don't like to speak English in public out of national pride. They want to be seen as being 100% faithful to the traditions of their culture 100% of the time, and I would think that Putin falls into this category. Putin did speak a fair bit of English in the run-up to the 2014 Sochi Olympics, however. His voice in English might be a little bit different than what you might expect. Would give the many people and peoples living here more confidence by underscoring the value of their aspirations to live and develop in the framework of the highest standards of present-day civilization. Angela Merkel can speak English, but she is not great at it, which is kind of unusual because Germany is a country where English fluency tends to be quite high. It might be because she grew up in communist <laughs> East Germany, which was pretty closed off to the outside world. In any case, whenever Merkel does speak English in public before an international audience, she usually only speaks a very little bit of it and apologizes that she's not very good at English, and then switches to speaking through a German translator for the rest of it. For example, when she spoke to the UK Parliament. As naturally I can ex express my thoughts better in my native language, I hope you will forgive me for delivering the rest of my speech in German. Or when she gave an address to the US Congress. Denn damals war es außerhalb meiner Vorstellungskraft überhaupt in die Vereinigten Staaten von Amerika reisen zu dürfen. This strikes me as a good example of the sort of humility that people sometimes say that women have, which is to say a woman is much more likely to be self-conscious of her limitations, whereas a man is much more likely to just barrel through. For example, compare Merkel to someone like Emmanuel Macron, the president of France. You could easily say that he's no better than Merkel at English, and possibly even a little bit worse, and yet he still gave his entire speech to the US Congress entirely in English. The 21st century has brought a series of new threats and new challenges that our ancestors might not ever have imagined. We could say the same of Trump's old pal Shinzo Abe, who often speaks English in public, despite obviously struggling with it. However, Japan's agriculture has gone into decline over these last 20 years. 
Narendra Modi, the nationalistic prime minister of India, tends to avoid speaking English in other countries. Although I assume he must speak it a fair bit in India. I know that English is a bridge language even within the context of India just because they have so many different native languages. But Modi did give a speech to the Australian parliament that was entirely in English. But it is the people of Australia who have made Australia what it is today. And of course, he held a big rally for Trump in Texas a few months ago, and that was obviously all in English too. He has left a deep and lasting impact everywhere. It's always been a bit surprising to me that the popes are not that great at English, given what an international job they have. Even amid conflicts and in the here and now of each day, to draw upon our deepest cultural reserve. This is verse of Isaiah quoted by St. Paul. I warmly greet each of you, bearers of wisdom, and through you, the staff, students, and families of the many and varied institutions of learning that you represent. But that might just be a symptom of the amount of time that they have spent in Italy which is generally ranked as one of the lowest European countries when it comes to English fluency. All right, and how about world leaders who have no English skills? Like I said, the vast majority of world leaders can speak enough English to get by, but there exists a very small group of world leaders who can basically speak no English at all. Either that or they speak so little English or they speak it so weakly that they just never ever do it in public. President Xi, the leader of China doesn't seem to speak any English. I haven't seen any clips of him speaking anything other than Chinese in any context ever. Jar Bolsonaro, the president of Brazil, also doesn't seem to know how to speak any English. He doesn't even seem to understand it. You can see in this recent press conference with President Trump, he has to use the live translation thing in his ear. That is something that a lot of foreign leaders do not do these days. Even if they're not comfortable speaking English when it is their time to talk, they will at least listen to the other guy speaking English. I am not sure if old man Erdogan in Turkey can speak much English. He never speaks it in public, not even when doing interviews on American TV. I am an open politician and I'm an open Leader. But on the other hand, there was this infamous episode in 2015 in which he was part of this public forum where one of the other guests was the old president of Israel. And everyone was speaking English except for him, but when things started to get pretty feisty, it seemed pretty obvious he could understand what was going on. Uh, one minute. One minute. Well, you know, one minute. One minute. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking it's all well and good for this English-speaking guy to be all haughty and dismissive of these foreigners and their struggles to speak English. But how many leaders of English-speaking countries can speak a second language? Well, that's a fair question, and the answer is basically not many. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada can speak fluent French. Mais aussi dans l'équilibre à quel point ils sont uh, impliqués ou visibles dans les médias, c'est c'est un équilibre à faire. On veut qu'ils aient une enfance. But that's because there are a lot of French-speaking people in Canada and he had a French-Canadian father. Boris Johnson of the UK can also speak French. This is because he went to school in Belgium when he was a kid. Formidable pour, pour Londres. On a, on a vu uh, incroyablement une vague d'investissement uh, uh, après les, les, les Jeux et, et maintenant. On, a, on reste le, la destination numéro un pour les touristes. Et, et ça, c'est... Euh, donc, on a, on a reçu euh, l'année dernière... <coughs> the former Prime Minister of Australia, Kevin Rudd, could speak fluent Chinese. He studied it when he was in college, and he lived in China for a while when he was working as an Australian diplomat. He would sometimes speak it in public to sort of project that he was this worldly guy who understood the importance of Australia's role in Asia. But other than that, it is pretty slim pickings. I mean, here in the New World, you do sometimes see politicians who can speak a language other than English. Often this is because they came from immigrant families where they grew up speaking something else. Longtime viewers of this channel may be aware of Jagmeet Singh, for instance. 
He is the head of the New Democratic Party of Canada. He can speak Punjabi because that was the language that his Indian immigrant parents spoke. Although he doesn't have much reason to ever speak it in public. And when he does, even I can tell he has a pretty strong Canadian accent. Qualification process on that. In the US, meanwhile, there are a lot of Latino politicians who can speak fluent Spanish. Take Florida Senator Marco Rubio, for instance. He comes from a family of Cuban immigrants and lives in a state where Spanish is spoken everywhere. So he accordingly speaks Spanish in public all the time. Marco Rubio Rubio, of course, ran for president a couple of years ago, and it sometimes seems to me that the U.S. is sort of slowly drifting into a kind of Canadian-style bilingualism regime for its top politicians, in which an ability to speak fluent English and Spanish is becoming more and more obligatory. Among the many Democrats who ran for president this time around, at least three were fluent enough in Spanish to be able to do interviews with Spanish-language media. Mayor Pete Buttigieg, a mejorar uh, esa situación y en esas reformas se puede también uh, buscar una unificación entre nuestra nación que es uh, tan uh, divididos. Beto O'Rourke. Pues necesitamos mejorar nuestra posición en, en las encuestas mm -hmm. uh, para que podamos calificar para los debates. And Cory Booker. No solamente los demócratas. Yo quiero ser uno presidente por toda la gente. En, en tenemos un, un, un te, terra común, common ground en nuestro, nuestro país. How long do you think it'll take before this is expected of all candidates. Now, two of the most interesting cases of all are the two most famous German-speaking politicians in American history, Henry Kissinger and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Both of them were immigrants to the United States who spoke English as their second language, as evidenced by their famously strong accents. It's just one of the disastrous situations that I've uh, created. Normally, expansionist countries and established countries clash. However, despite their accents, both Kissinger and Schwarzenegger have now spent so much time in America, where there aren't that many German speakers, that their German speaking skills have started to atrophy quite a bit, and they are both fairly self-conscious about this. Kissinger doesn't really like speaking German anymore. He only does interviews in German for German journalists if they really insist, as you can see here. Can I speak English? You can. I mean, I would love to hear you speaking German, but... Well, my German was a 15-year-old German. I know. Was sehr hoch. Aber er war ein anderer Typ wie Schmidt. Er interessierte sich nicht für abstrakte Probleme, so wie sich Schmidt, wenn es nicht für die Probleme, für die ich besonders zuständig war. Aber ich sah brandoffen, oft. Und ich hatte, ich schätzte ihn sehr. Und er hat sehr große Verdienste. But these days, particularly given his advanced age, he much prefers to speak to Germans through a translator. Here he is with the former Chancellor of Germany, Helmut Schmidt. And you can see he's listening to Schmidt speak German without using a translator, but he is using a translator to speak back to him. One has to ask Ein internationales what System zu überdenken, muss man sich dessen Komponenten bewusst. But then when Schmidt died, he did speak German at his funeral. Über das Gewissen gibt es mancherlei theologische und philosophische. Arnold Schwarzenegger is very similar. He thinks that his German has gotten really bad and thus generally avoids speaking it in public. But like Kissinger, he does sometimes do interviews in German when asked by German-speaking reporters. It's wichtig, that man immer aktiv bleibt and hungrig bleibt. Aber zur gleichen Zeit ist es auch wichtig, dass man sagt, I'll be back. And he will give the occasional speech in German to German-speaking audiences. But here in Österreich had for me ja alles begonnen. Here habe ich die ersten Handeln gehoben. Here habe ich die ersten Meisterschaften gewonnen. 
I know I have a fair number of German viewers, so I'm keen to hear what you guys think. Are these two really as bad at German as they think they are? And for the rest of you, do you have any other good examples of politicians or world leaders who are either really good at English, really bad at English, or uniquely skilled in some other language? Let me know in the comments. Do not forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next week. Oh yes, and one other thing. If you live in LA and are interested in doing a meetup, send me a message on either Instagram or email, and we will see if we can get something together.